Greetings fellow geeks and welcome to a special episode of Geeks Like Me with me your host Drake and Red Fox. Today we are privileged and honored to have one of the top 10 cosplayers in the world with us, Linda Lee, the super talented and beautiful cosplayer also known as Bambi But Me. Linda, welcome oh. to Geeks Like Me and welcome to South Africa. Yeah, thank you so much for that intro because I'm always like, what? <laughs> but yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I'm so excited to be here. Um, it was actually on my top five to be here. Um, I was like, I'll never get, probably get to go to South Africa. I'll probably never get to go to Africa in general. I was thinking that for a long time. And I got an email um, from this convention, Icon, and I said, oh my gosh, I freaked out. Because I was like, there's cosplay there? I know that there's some, but that I didn't know it extent, so I'm really stoked to be here. So as you were excited to be here, I was at the announcement, because we had a little small cosplay <gasps> oh, convention. Oh, you saw was, the video? I was at the announcement when it got announced, and your South African fans went absolutely nuts. So oh, okay. They went completely crazy it's, going, ah. It's really crazy, because I, you know when you're just like kind of in the zone, mm. and you're working so much, you'll put a tweet out, but you don't think anyone's going to see it sometimes, and you're just like so jaded by like internet that you're just not thinking. And like I literally was tweeting and I was like thinking, no one's, is anyone, does anyone want to talk to me there? <laughs> like it, it was, well, thank you for telling yeah. me that. Yeah, so. no, you, you have a fan base here. Oh, uh, cool. I, I, I would love to have them tweet me or something. It would oh, be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. Once I see this, make sure <laughs> yeah. you allowed. So I have to ask, you have a business degree from the San Jose State University. Uh -huh. You studied hairstyling for Paul Mitchell in the States and Tony and Guy in the UK. How did it all come to you being a professional cosplayer? Uh, you know, the thing is, um, professional cosplay is a very weird, weird word for me still because I still feel like I'm, I'm definitely not 15 anymore, but I still feel like I'm that girl, you know, in high school, like, that still did the same stuff. You know, I was a skateboarder, and, you know, I still skateboard, and I still might wear my Vans, and I still wear my metal shirts. I probably still have the same shirts from high school, like, you know, like Iron Maiden and Metallica. I grew up in the Bay Area, so, like, there was a lot of cre creativity there as a tech, tech area, so it's, like, a lot of tech. And my friends never understood me quite well, and I, I think in the geek yeah. culture, never, n no one really does uh, to a certain extent, unless you meet the same similar people. But how that came about is that I met some people in gaming, and they knew I made costumes for a very long time. And I can tell you, I was 25 when I actually did my first photo shoot, really late, because um, I was already working a lot um, behind the scenes. So um, a friend of mine, he worked on he worked on Street Fighter. So he was like, I never held a camera before, but I just bought a nice one. And I said, uh, okay, what do you want? And he was like, do you want to do a photo shoot with me? And I said, man, I'm totally too short to be a model. <laughs> like I shouldn't even take a picture, like behind, like in my mind, because I always worked with like models who are like six feet tall. So um, he was like, just let's, let's take some pictures of your costumes. And I said, okay, it's gonna be awkward because I don't know how to pose. And um, the first pictures were Morgan, the ones at Dark Stalkers. Yeah. That was my first real photo shoot, really. Like maybe um, two months into what I was doing. Wow. And I love the character so much so that I tried to like <laughs> capture it, you know? And I think ever since then, uh, maybe almost 10 years ago, that's when it launched. So maybe 10 years, like. It was weird though, because I didn't, I didn't want it to be anything. Yeah. Okay. So I find it really interesting uh, speaking to some cosplayers in South Africa as well. Um, every cosplayer has their unique name, and I am really always interested to find out the story behind that name. Oh, mine's not that interesting, but I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was a funny joke. I was obsessed with vampires. I still really like vampires, not Twilight, but I liked vampires yeah, Twilight's before. not vampires. No, no, it's sparkly ones. <laughs> and um, I, I was really obsessed with vampires. Um, I don't know why. I think um, werewolves. I really like werewolves. Mm -hmm. And the, the underworld, you know, mm -hmm. any of that weird dark thing. Yeah. I, I think I was obsessed with it when I was younger. And um, it was on a lot of like metal covers that I listened to. I'm like, I have a lot of vampires in front of it. It's pretty cool, you know? And aesthetically, I, I connected to that. 
Um, so I always named myself Vampy. And then there was a dot com that opened up called Bitme. And I said, that's hilarious. That's the, the most silly name ever I could put Vampy Bitme as a joke. <laughs> and I was like, man, this is pretty funny. Like, I'll just make a website of my costumes. And this is this, around the same time I did my first photo shoots. So I was like, yeah, that would be silly to just call myself Vampy Bitme. Never thinking it was going to be anything. Um, and it launched the same year. Um, just my pictures went viral and I was like, no, I'm stuck now with Vampy Bit Me. So that's how it came about. And I don't like it too much, but I've grown accustomed to. Oh, we love it. We love oh, it. good. Yeah. Thank you. Someone's got to like it. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay, you know, apart from having your own YouTube channel in, I think it was 2000. And twelve, uh -huh. you joined up with Nerdist Industries. Yeah, Nerdist. Uh -huh. Yeah, Nerdist Industries to do an internet show called Just Cause. Yes, just uh, for cosplay. Yeah, mm -hmm. with um, co-hosted by Chloe Daystro. Yes, and then uh, it, like um, Chris Hardwick actually yeah. was Chris, part of yeah, that. Chris Hardwick. Yeah, it was um, his company at that time. So, tell us a little bit about your experience on the show. How was it? It was really weird because like. Um, the actual, the people that owned um, Angry Birds, mm -hmm. so he had extra money. He's like, uh, I like your costumes, and this was like 2011. He's like, would you like to do a show, and you can do whatever you want? And I said, uh, okay. I had a meeting with him in Hollywood, and I was like, this is really awkward, like, cosplay's not that big yet, um, or like, it, at that time. And I was like, uh, I might get a lot of flack for it, because... A lot of cosplay don't like they don't like um, being kind of highlighted like that on television or whatever. But it was YouTube, and I said like let's show off other people's costumes. Why not? So we went to New York Comic Con and did our first episode. And it was great. Um, but I had to leave um, because I had other. I started traveling at that time, so I only did like a, a couple episodes with them. So it was great. Like it, that's how it came about. He's like, what do you want to do? And I said, uh, let's do a cosplay show. That's it. Yeah, and it happened. Okay, great. So um, over the the last couple of years, um, we've seen a lot of your cosplays, some really amazing cosplays, anything from anime to gaming characters to comic book characters. Mm -hmm. And being like a big comic book fan and a big superhero fan, like some of my favorite cosplays is like your Nightwing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Your Nightwing is absolutely amazing. And Psylocke from X Men. Oh, yeah. So I have to ask, do you read a lot of comics? Uh, yeah, I grew up every Wednesday going to the comic book store with my brother. Um, yeah, pretty much ever since I was like seven years old and I could get, back then it was 95 cents to get, um, I'm all back then, um, you, can, you can figure out my age now. Um, so like, uh, it was 90 cents back then to get a comic book. And I love Jim Lee. I was obsessed with his artwork because his line art to me, spoke to me, I was like, you know, Alex Ross, like his mm. art is an insane. And I was like, I love that guy. I love Jim Lee. And I was a big like Image Comics fan and J. Scott Campbell. Like I loved all of those comic books. And um, yeah, like I will keep on going on about it, but I should stop. But I think every Wednesday, yeah, I, that was my thing. Went to the ice cream truck, got my 25 cent uh, Napoleon, like, you know, whatever ice cream and then uh, is that what it's pronounced i don't yeah. remember but anyway and then go to the comic book store, store pick up a few comics from my brother walk back home reading them so that was our of, thing together yeah well one of my favorite comic books at this stage to read is the all new x23 uh of yeah. the wolverine where x23 takes over the mantle of wolverine because he passed oh yeah so i personally think that you would rock an X-23 cosplay, you know, would you consider this, doing that? The crazy thing is I already started my X-23. I wanted to, yeah, like I I, I think we're here because I, um, you know, at first I, I read, when I read um, X, uh, like pretty much Laura Kent McKinney, you know, and I was like, man, um, I didn't like her backstory as much, and, but now she's like really taking on the role and I thought, I think she's so badass. Yeah. I really love her now. It's, it's, she's it's better than ever now. So, so we, we, we would get to see that cosplay? Uh, yes. My friends did it and I was like, man, I want to do it too because it's pretty awesome. She's a strong lady. I mean, especially on Logan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And it, yeah, it was, it's pretty awesome. So, um, if I'm great, you met Stanley. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So to, to most geeks, he's like, 
God. You know, he's like pretty oh, much. Yeah, he, he, he created, created everything. everything we love. <laughs> yes. But getting to meet him face to face is there is almost impossible. It is. Tell us what he's like. He is the sweetest. Okay, he is the Hugh Hefner. I kid you not. He is the Hugh Hefner of comics because he's like standing there in the corner, and there's like you know seven people like protecting him. Just like a, like you know always smiling and everything, and I was like. Man, I want to meet him. Like, I can't. I don't think I'll ever have this chance again. So I was at a mixer, like a party, um, uh, for a nerdist, and I was like, I need to meet, meet him. I really need to meet him. My friend's like, Oh, you want to meet him? Okay. And I was like, That easy? So before I even walked up, he was like, Just like Psylocke. He pointed at me. He said, Just like Psylocke. And I had purple hair at that time, and I almost died. I said, What? I was like, oh my gosh, can I take a picture with you? And guess what he does? He grabs me. He didn't ask or anything, he just grabbed me. He's like, of course, honey. Like, he's so animated. And then my mind, I'm like, if you were just a regular guy, and if, you know, like, I'll be like, hey, but it's Stanley. He, he go ahead and grab stuff. my arm. Yeah, grab you, me, you grab my arm, that's <laughs> fine. Like, I was okay with it. And I was, he was amazing, but he's definitely like a ladies' man. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought that much about him. Of course. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, Stan like a, Lee. he's Stan Lee. He's uh, yeah, he, the Hugh Hefner of comics. So, okay. um, If you had to, um, for, for the fans, you know, the cosplay, inspiring cosplayers here, the inspired cosplayers, what words of wisdom and inspiration can you give them? Yeah, there's a lot to say usually. Um, but here, you mean. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, it's... Is it generally really hard to get comics here, like, or just nerd stuff? No, we have, like... Well, it's kind of obvious else. that you guys can get it. We, we can get it. Yeah, and I notice a lot of that in cosplay, but I think that, you know, the only thing I can really say, and I say this often, is that, like, um, no matter what your age, and this means a lot to a lot of my friends who are in their 40s and 30s and even really young, um, don't stray away from what makes you truly happy because if you do, then you're going to lose yourself. And I almost did around my 20s. And I was like, okay, I'm getting older. I have to act my age. What does that mean? Yeah, no. What does that... And I started thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> there is no adult thing. Exactly. Like the, and I started thinking, like, I can't lose myself. So then I was like, you know what? Who cares what people think? I'm just going to do what I want. And I've been happy ever since. Yeah. Lena, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you, you so as well. much for, yeah. for joining us on Geeks Like Me. And as a token, something you can take back to US. Oh yeah. There's a little Geeks Like Me button for you. Really? you yeah, for you. Okay, you awesome. Take, just Thank you. Us by. Oh yeah, I'm totally gonna put this in my backpack right away. <laughs> So yeah, yeah um, that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your icon and enjoy the rest of your stay in South Africa. Thank you so much. And yeah, I will. I hope to see um, you again. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And that brings us to an awesome interview with Linda Lee, an amazing person, amazing cosplayer. If you guys liked it, please subscribe to our channel, share it with all your friends. Until next time, game on and geek on. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vampy Bit Me, and I love geeks like me.